Greetings everyone, Rio Grande fan back here again with another ESU tutorial video. This time I'm going to show you a little bit better way to transfer horns from one sound file to the other. I've already done a video on this but it was a little bit cumbersome. There's actually a better way now. So if you navigate to the sound files that you want, I've already done that. I've got a 0746 and I've got 0575 open here just as an example this is an EMD 567 file over here we have the GE file and we're just gonna pretend like we want to transfer some horns across this video assumes you've already gone to the ESU website you've already downloaded your sound files and you've discovered that oh maybe the horn you want isn't there and you want to transfer horns so once you get the local programmer software installed and you open the sound files directly again remember open the sound files directly into the local programmer software that way everything populates properly you want to click on the sound button for both files which opens up this window and you can actually see everything in the sound schedule now since we want to transfer horns we're going to double click on the horn packs you'll see this one the EMD has the, the first generation horn pack and the GE has the second generation horn pack and maybe there's a horn in here like the uh, Nathan M5 that doesn't appear over here maybe we want that in the GE file so we'll just quickly go through how that works how we can add it to the list this is part of a pack and it's very easy to actually to transfer a horn from one pack to the other so if we just give ourselves a little more room here you click on the little mute rectangle drag it longer we're going to come over here and we're going to grab all the pieces of the Nathan M5. Both lines, and you can do this by holding down Shift. You, so first you click the line once, then hold down Shift. Click the second line, and then click the horn itself, the horn box. So you get all three entities collected, uh, selected there. Then we're going to do a Control C. Click in this window. We're going to do a Control V. You can see it pasted it in on top of the other horn there. And just drag it off. And you'll notice the two arrow lines here are red. So just click on one of them, grab the little box, and kind of connect it to the mute. It'll turn black when you click off of it. We're going to do the same thing with this one. It doesn't matter which end you do. We're just going to do that again, and it turns black, and now you're good to go. Horn is now in this sound file. If you ever do this and you get an error or this little blue bar at the top here turns red, it means that there's not enough room on the decoder for this sound to be added. So you'll have to choose one of these other horns and delete it and then come down into the sound list down here in the bottom right corner and actually find it and delete it from that list. That actually is what removes it from the sound files uh, itself. And that will free up more space so that you can add more horns. You can add as many horns as you want as long as there's enough space. And just to quickly show you in case you run into that problem, let's say we don't really want the S5 or maybe the S3. We don't want an S3 horn. So you can actually double click on it, click on init. You can actually see what its name is in the WAV file. You can just scroll this down now there we go. So we see it's Leslie S3LR. So you want to delete everything that's related to the S3LR. In, in this case, I'm not going to do it, but if you needed to, you could select all of these files and actually delete them. That will remove them from the sound file and free you up some space. Okay, since we're not going to do that, we don't need to. It stayed blue. We are getting pretty close to the limit, though, so we probably couldn't add another horn. Since we've added our horn now, it's at the bottom of the list and some things are wrong. You'll see up here we have, actually if we look here, we have F equals true and SV9 equals 8. We have another one of those up here. We can't have two of them. That won't work. So we have to change this one. So you click on this line and because it's the last horn, we now, have, we now notice that our last horn is 13. So now this is the 14th horn. So we're going to double click on this. It's going to bring up a little window. We're going to change this to be greater than or equal to 
you can just type in this field 14 and hit OK. Click in the white and it changes to greater than or equal to 14. Now if you look at 13, because it was the last horn previously, it has a greater than or equal to 13, but we got to change that to the one like that's above or just says equals. So you click on that, double click this, bring this down to just equals 13, hit OK, and now we're okay. Oh, it turned it turned red on us, so we actually don't have enough room to do this. So we're going to have to delete a horn in order to do this. So, well, to use the example from earlier, we're just going to delete the S3LR. So the first thing you want to do, actually I'm not going to do that. To make it easy for this video, I'm going to delete the very last one here. I'm going to delete 13. So we're just going to highlight all of these actually first of all we're going to double click this we're going to click here to make sure we know what files it is this is a good thing to do good thing this happened in the video because uh, this will give you a little extra education on what to do in this case so we need to find the Nathan P5 R24 there we go everything related to the Nathan P5 R24 so what we're gonna do first though is we're gonna actually just get rid of it here so we're gonna go here shift click all the lines hit delete and then you see these actually gray out because they're not used now that also will help you determine which ones to get rid of the ones that are grayed so we can click on the first one hold shift click on the last one it selects them all and we can just hit delete and now that deleted that we now have to change this because now it's the 13th horn back to 13 we can leave greater than or equal to because now it's still the last horn and this thing still stayed red so it's not enough space we're still negative 48 KB so we're gonna have to get rid of another one so let's go ahead and get rid of the P3 So again, we're going to have to click on these, hit delete, it turns gray, the P3 ones turn gray, click it once, hold down shift, click it again, make sure you got all the P3s, and then hit delete. It looked like we we did it, we got it back to blue, and we have some free capacity again. But now again, we're going to have to change this to 12, because now it's the 12th horn. This is actually a pretty big file. I probably shouldn't have picked this one to show you, but now you kind of know what to do in case that happens. This can actually stay right where it is, or if you want to make it look pretty, you can move it up. It's really not going to matter. And now we've got the horn you want ultimately on there. Let's say your railroad only used five chime horns. You could, in theory, get rid of all the three chime horns because you're never going to use them, right? So you could get rid of them. If your railroad was a three chime horn railroad only you would want to import the three chime horn that you want and then get rid of all the five chime horns just depends on what your railroad does or how you want the file having more horn options is great but of course you will run out of space as you just saw you can't do that and they won't let you do it actually <laughs> won't actually write it to the decoder and just to verify we've done everything right you can hit validate and if you don't see any weird little red X's and you've done everything correctly. If you want, you can scrunch this back up, keep things clean. It doesn't really matter, but it's up to you. So anyway, that's pretty much how you do it. You would just find the file you want to be the, the donor that has the, the horn that you want, highlight it, copy it over into the file you're going to use for your locomotive project. And then you can simply write it to the decoder. You'll have to have a look programmer to do this and you just click the music note because we're messed with the sounds so in order to put it on the decoder you have to do the full sound rewrite which takes about 25 to 30 minutes or so to do using the look programmer and then once you're done you'll have the horn you want. I recommend that if you're brand new at this and you're um, you discovered that the horn you want isn't on the file in the sound file 
to you know go through and, and, and check things first. So download the sound file, open the sound file, go right in here to the sound tab or go to the information tab. It'll show you the horn list. If the horn you want's not there, do this first. What really is disappointing is when you think, oh, I'm just going to write the file and everything's going to be great, and then you discover after it's done that you don't have the right horn. Now you got to do it again. So you put the right horn in, then you got to write it again. Not the end of the world, but it's better if you can do it in the beginning. So that's pretty much all there is for that. I'm not actually going to write this. This was just an example, but that's how you would do it if you wanted to put it on your decoder. Well, that's it for this video. Hope it was helpful, and uh, I'll be doing a few more here, and hopefully they'll help you out. That's all for now. Rio Grande fan out.